الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اما بعد باب التوبة وقد تظاهر الدلائل الكتاب والسنة وإجماع الأمة على وجوب التوبة قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون وقال سبحانه وتعالى فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصحا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب الشحي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زيدنا علماء اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين رب اغفر ورحمه وتجاوزا ما تعالى منك أنت العز الأكرم رب اغفر ورحمه وأنت خير الراحمين الحمد لله إنا ولاسكا دنين We covered the first two verses Imam Nawabi رحمة الله عليه has brought in the introduction of the chapter of Tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has drawn our attention towards seeking forgiveness in the first verse which is from Surah Al-Nur and the second verse which is from Surah Al-Nuh. In the first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about few adab and the etiquettes and rulings regarding hijab, regarding beauty. And at the end of the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the believing men and the women, that if you have any shortcomings, if you are not able to fulfill the adab and the etiquettes and the orders, then you need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you need to seek forgiveness. And in the second verse, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam story, where Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he gave da'wah to his people to, brought them to, uh, to direct them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in his da'wah, he mentioned that, istaghfiru rabbakum, that seek forgiveness from your Lord, إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. You may have gone far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may have taken yourself very, very far away. But it doesn't matter. You turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You turn to Him. You seek forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you back to Him. In these two verses and in also the third verse, تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً النَّسُوحًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used a fi'l amr, a positive command. Generally, a positive command requires wujub that you have to do. You don't have a choice, you don't have an option. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that you have to do this tawbah, you have to seek forgiveness, you have to turn to him. And the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we cannot compromise. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator, he's our khaliq, he's our malik. He doesn't need to command us. His indications and his hints should be sufficient for us. That will only become visible and that would only happen if we have the true ma'rifat and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when a husband and a wife have good bond between them and have a strong connection between them, every hint of the wife will draw the attention of the husband that the wife does not like this scent or the wife does not like this type of food or the wife does not like this sort of words, then the husband will do his best not to do those actions. Why? Because she dislikes them. She does not like them. So the husband will try his best not to break the heart of the wife. Like this, when we have the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we have the true ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will not break any command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every hint would be sufficient for us to be able to, to follow his order. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the tubu, he's used a positive command of fa'ali amr, that means we have to turn to him. So in the third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyul ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha, a verse from Surah Al-Tahreem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us that all believers turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincere repentance, turn to him with tawbatun nasuh. Now tawbatun nasuh, Imam Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi, in his tafsir has given about 23 opinions. What Tawbat al is, he has brought the opinions of the ulama, about 23 of them he has gathered. Now if we take the word Tawbat al the word Nasuh can be taken from two different meanings. One is Nasiha, or the second one is from Nasahat. If you take from Nasiha, it means to, to make something pure, 
to make something clean, to make something slick, and to make something true, not contaminated at all. Something very, very completely pure and clean. So when a person has tawbah, nasuh means he is true in his tawbah. He is sincere in his tawbah. He is completely genuine in his tawbah. There is no sort of deficiency in his tawbah. So that's what the first meaning could be. The second meaning of nasuh could be from nasahat, which means to stitch something, to patch up something. The libas of taqwa that we have, the covering of taqwa we had, had holes in them because of the sins that we were committing. Had got holes in them and he had broken up and he had damage in them. So we need to stitch up those holes, we need to stitch up those damages that we have caused through tawbah. So our tawbah sh should be said that it amends and fixes the libas on the cover of tawbah, taqwa that we had. So inshallah through this tawbah to nasuh, we'll be able to have complete taqwa in our lives. Then in the end of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the person who has tawbah nasuh in his life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him jannat in tajri min tahtil anhar similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in about taqwa that when a person has taqwa then u'iddatil al-muttaqeen Allah al-ladhina yunfiquna fi sarra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed that as well that the person who has taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him jannah the person who has tawbah in his life also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised him jannah now one of the opinion of tawbah al-nasuh is that Hassan Bissi rahmatullahi alayhi he said that tawbah al-nasuh is that a person had uh, complete regret of his sins of the past. He's completely regret and remorseful of the sins that he has done in the past. And he makes a firm resolution not to repeat those sins again. Hassan Bissi rahmatullahi alayhi, he explained that Tawbatun Nasuh in the Maya. Imam Kalbi rahmatullahi alayhi, he says that Tawbatun Nasuh is that verbally we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From our tongue we ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the bottom of our heart, we have regret and remorse. From the bottom of our heart, we have regret and remorse. And third thing is that we prevent the limbs, the body parts, not to commit those sins again. We stop our body parts from committing those sins again in the future. So in all these three aspects, then a person has, then he will be able to have Tawbat al-Nasuh. Umar, uh, Umar anhu, and Ubay bin Ka'b were asked about Tawbat al-Nasuh. They replied that Tawbat al-Nasuh is, and yatuba th uh, thumma la ya'uda ila, ila dhambi. That the way the milk cannot return back to the udders, that's the way that a person should not return back to the sin that he was involved in and he was committing, that he completely disconnects himself and takes him away from the sin that he was involved in. And the Sa'id bin Musayyid rahmatullahi alayhi he said that Tawbat al nasuh is that you wish well and you wish goodness for yourself. When a person is living a disobedient life, a person is living a life of sins, that means that he's direct himself and taking himself towards Jahannam. But when a person wishes good him for himself, when a per person wishes well for himself, that means I need to go towards Jannah. And the way to go towards Jannah is to do Tawbat al nasuh is to turn away from the wrong path and come to the right path. The uh, Mufti Shabir Ahmad Uthmani rahmatullahi alayhi has explained that no thought of sins, no thought of sins should remain in that person. If any fraction of sin, any traces of sin, remains in that person, that means there's a problem in his, in his tawbah. There's a problem in his tawbah. He needs to completely turn himself away from the sin that he was involved in. And inshallah, it will be possible when a person is sincere in his tawbah, when a person is sincere in his repentance, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it possible for him. It's never too late. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us many opportunities in our life to turn to him. He has met he so many people here, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them 10 Ramadan, 11 Ramadan, 20 Ramadan. Yes, inshallah, the month of Ramadan is approaching again. It's another chance for us to change our life before the month of Ramadan. Before the month of Ramadan begin and it starts, we need to change our uh, life. We need to turn ourselves away from disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience. And there are opportunities, there are chan chances in our lives where these things do become possible. Ibn, uh, Ibn Qudama rahmatullahi alayhi has narrated the famous story of Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi. By Nick bin Dinar, he, used to say, he said that he was a person who used to drink alcohol and wine. In the half of the night, once he passed, the, uh, sorry, he went to sleep. So it was the 15th of Sha'bad. Half of the night has gone by and he f fell asleep in that um, manner, in that condition, in that situation, and he fell asleep. Um, in the dream, he saw the Day of Judgment is taking place. And he's come out of his grave and behind him there's a huge, like a snake, dragon, something chasing him. So he started running away. 
He started running away for his life. So he started running, running, and on the way he met an old person. He asked him that, you know, for help, that can he help me from this? He said that I'm too weak, I'm too fragile, I cannot, I do not have the strength to help you. So he continued running until he came to like a hilltop. He looked down and there was fire there. Somebody called to him and he called out that, you know, you, you're not one of those who deserve this. Turn away. So he turned away. Now he started running in a different direction and he came to a palace. He came to a huge house where the guards of the palace realized. So they opened the doors and Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi ran towards it and they realized there were some children there out of which his daughter who had passed away at a young age was also there. So she noticed the father running towards her. So he quickly went towards Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi and with her hands, she moved away this snake that was running behind him. She sat in the lap of Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi. He recited the verse, She mentioned that has the time for the believers not come, that where they change their life and where they have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she had a discussion with the Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi and gave the advice of changing his life. When he woke up, Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi, he completely changed his life from where he was before he went to sleep, now where he was, now a completely different person. So there are occasions in our life where these things happen. So we need to take these opportunities. Like this, another story mentioned that whilst Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi was in his home in the, the night time, he was performing tahajjud salah. A thief came into his home. A thief came into his home, managed to get in, and he was looking around to take something, some uh, valuable items, but he couldn't find anything. Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi in his salah realized that there is somebody with him in his home. He's not alone anymore. He quickly finished his salah. He looked around and he saw the thief there. He greeted him with his salam. And he said that, you know, you've come here. Might as well give you something valuable. Might as well take something valuable from me. So he said to Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi Sorry, Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi said to the thief, that, sit down here, wait for me. He went to the other room. He brought some water for him, made him perform the wudu. And he said to the thief that, you know, pray two rakah salah here. Pray two rakah salah here. So this person, this thief, he prayed the two rakah salah and the benefit, the, uh, the taste that he got in this two rakah salah was so amazing that he asked the Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi that can I perform two more rakahs, two more rakahs. Like this, he ended up staying with the full night with Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi and then in the morning he asked that can I stay for longer and he ended up, stay, uh, ended up staying with, his, uh, with Malik bin Dina rahmatullahi alayhi for a couple of days. Later on, when he departed, he met the, the thief, met his partners in crime. And they asked that, you know, you went to this person's house, what valuable item did you come out with? So he said to the people that I went to take something valuable, but I ended up getting something. Uh, so Malik bin Dira, he took something, he gave me something more valuable. He gave me something more valuable. So this is the, the toba that he did. The toba was a toba to Nasuh where a person completely changes his life. So this is the, the lesson that we learned from the third verse Imam Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi has brought. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, you know, make it possible for us that we, we change our life as well. And inshallah it will be possible when we make the firm resolution. Yes, we are living in a very difficult and very challenging times where wherever we turn, the chances of sins are very easy for us. But when a person is sincere, when a person is dedicated to something when he's committed and when he has the firm resolution then everything becomes possible for him we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do tawbatun nasuh to sincerely repent to him and change our habits and prepare for the month of ramadan from now we have about 25 24 days left Inshallah, if you do the Tawbah from now, then once the month of Ramadan begins, then we will be able to benefit and experience the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice upon what has been heard and what has been said. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah, there's Jamaat also here from Pakistan. Brothers are kindly requested to take part in the Mashura as well and benefit the ulama in the Jamaat as well. And to sit in the gathering, Inshallah, it will become a means of guidance for us as well and guidance for the Ummah. Jazakullah khairah. سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك يا رحمة جزاكم